Oh my God, have you seen mom recently? She's unbelievable. I was just there last night. She was dropping the F-bomb over and over. It's not funny. God, I hope Father O'Malley doesn't hear her talk like that. What is going on? This is not like her. Yeah. Then she was telling me that when she was a teenager that some shooting happened in her old neighborhood and someone's dog got killed. Did that really happen? Well, she swears that it did. I don't know what to believe anymore. Oh, oh. Oh, and get this. She said that Carolyn, her friend that lives across the street. No, the other neighbor, Carolyn. Yeah, that neighbor. Anyway, anyway. She said Carolyn is getting way too fat and has hideous fingernails. She actually told her that to her face. What are we going to do? She's out of control. Mom would never have said mean things like that. What are we going to do? I've told her to be nice, but she keeps on doing it. This is not like her. Oh my God. I, I know. Okay. Yeah, I got to go. All right. Hey, my new friend, you made it. Pull up a chair, get comfy, relax, take a well-deserved break. You deserve it. Man, life can be so hard sometimes. I'm going to tell you, you're doing a great job. You are. You are a hero. And you're here with me, learning more and more. I'm so happy that we're together today. I absolutely love sharing with you. Please share with me and tell me a little bit about you in the comments. Tell me if you've been diagnosed with dementia or you're a professional in the senior caregiving field or the medical field or a family care partner. I love getting to know a little bit about my viewers. Tell me what a typical day is like for you. Tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're a community and we all help each other here at Answers About Alzheimer's. Oh, I forgot, if you're new here, my name is Deborah Castu. I've been on this dementia journey. My mom was diagnosed for about 20 years prior to her murdering death, but that's in another video. Anyway, even though I've had my personal experiences with Alzheimer's and dementia, it's different from yours. Even though I've worked with hundreds of families dealing with neurodegeneration, your family is different from them. Everyone's story and experiences are unique. Everyone's journey is different. But as different as we are, we have similarities also. Inhibitory control or cognitive control is one of our executive functions. It involves controlling our automatic urges by pausing and our brain uses reasoning to respond or act appropriately. This function allows us to think before we speak. It allows us to focus on what we choose to focus on and resist temptations like eating cupcakes for every meal. <laughs> Our inhibitory control helps us to see things from another perspective and gives us the ability to adapt and change. It gives us the ability to rationalize. Have you ever had an unwanted thought? Of course you have. We all have. Like just a terrible thought, maybe of a loved one getting hurt. You think to yourself, where did that come from? Maybe you saw on the news a person brutally murdered and you think about something similar happening to someone that you know. Or maybe you're worried about your child who's not answering your texts and all of a sudden these unspeakable, terrifying thoughts run through your head. You with your healthy brain, you are able to push that filth from your thoughts. You are able to dismiss it 
you are able to forcefully change your thought pattern. You can change what you're thinking about by making a conscious effort. Those with dementia, they can't do that. They don't recognize that it's a negative notion. They can't even try. So when they say something inappropriate, it's not necessarily a true concept. It's not really the person's beliefs. It's the mind going in its own direction. It's a free for all. Whatever pops in is coming out. Look out, it's coming. The frontal temporal lobe of the brain is damaged or affected by dementia. We begin to have difficulty with knowing what is appropriate and what is not. Our social skills fly right out the window. Nothing is off limits anymore. The prefrontal cortex or the PFC is located above the eyebrows behind the forehead and it's part of the frontal lobe of the brain. The cortex is the dense outer layers of the brain. This is where most of our brain neurons are located. It is also referred to as the gray matter. The PFC or prefrontal cortex is also responsible for decision making. It enables us to predict or see future possible outcomes or implications of certain actions. So imagine if you have cell death in this area of your brain, for example, you're at a karaoke nightclub and someone is singing really bad. You would refrain from telling them how ear-piercingly annoying their singing was, that their voice made you want to slit your wrists. You would stop yourself from speaking your mind. That's thanks to your PFC and inhibitory control. Thank you, prefrontal cortex. But if you have damage to this portion of your brain, you wouldn't think twice about making that comment, nor would you understand the feelings of others, and you would tell that person they sucked. It doesn't mean that the person with brain damage is an uncaring individual. It doesn't mean that they are rude. It simply means that their brain has lost the ability to rationalize and contemplate consequences. Have you ever heard the story of Phineas Gage? This is a great story. So in 1848 in a little town in Vermont, this man, Mr. Gage, worked on the railroad. He was putting dynamite powder into the rocks to blow it up for the team to put down the tracks. He was using a 48 inch long and a one and a quarter inch diameter metal rod to pound the dynamite powder into the rock when it exploded. The four foot steel pole shot like a bullet and traveled through his left cheek and completely through his skull and landed about 50 feet away. Conscious, conscious, he then rode an ox cart to town to get medical attention. He survived an infection, and as time passed, his behavior changed from being a mild-mannered man to something quite different. He was no longer allowed to be around women because he would say rude and offensive things to them. Now, it was common for him to use profane language, which was not part of his previous character. Phineas Gage was one of the first cases to link brain damage to personality changes. He was known as the man who began neuroscience. This unfortunate accident for Gage was when neurology was in its infancy stage and his tragic accident was the first source of evidence that the frontal lobe was involved with personality. Groundbreaking history in the field of neurology. Phineas lived another 11 years working various jobs, one of which resembled a sideshow while he earned money peddling the iron that impaled him. Seven years after his death, his brother had his body exhumed and gave the skull and the rod 
to his brother's doctor, Dr. Harlow, who eventually donated them to the Harvard School of Medicine, and they are currently on display at the university's museum. Gage and Dr. Harlow played a very important role in understanding the brain functions and behavior. Isn't that cool? The deterioration of the brain results in a physical attack on our personality traits and our character. We spend our entire lifetime presenting ourselves as we wish others to see us, building our reputation and credibility. As the disease takes over, we become victims and we are no longer able to think before we speak or understand consequences for our words or actions. We don't consider the feelings of others or understand about community social conventions. Let's think about ourselves. You think about you. Who are you as a person? Who do you aspire to be? How do you want others to perceive you? When you're gone and you've passed away, what do you want others to say about you? What is the reputation you've been building yourself over and over for your entire lifetime? Think about that for a moment. For me, I want people to describe me as happy, fun, smart, kind, considerate, giving, and thoughtful. What would your circle say about you? Now, let's say at the end of your life, you develop dementia. Your brain turns into Swiss cheese. Your personality and your character are compromised. Now you are mean and you say and do embarrassing things. The brain damage has taken over your inhibitory control. Does this change who you are as a person? Who you were all your life? Does a brain disease for the last few years of your life define you? Does it change what others think of you? Is all the good you've done all those years suddenly erased because you have a brain disease? Are you now a horrible, nasty, angry person? Should you be punished currently for having brain damage? Should others look at you differently? Should they treat you differently? Should you be judged on your current personality? Should you be judged at all? Should your now warped character determine the care that you receive? They can't help it. Remember that. They can't help it. Stop judging. It's not fair. It's not fair to judge a person with brain damage for their words or actions that they no longer have control over. Are you a nurse, a doctor, or an aide, a dining server, or a housekeeping personnel in a senior living setting? Would you like to go to work every day knowing exactly how to handle any situation that arises with any person with dementia? Then head on over to my website, answersaboutalz.org, and get on the mailing list so that you can be notified when we launch our new certification program.